how do you know Crystal? Crystal and I have been friends for over a decade. I met her in 2007. We met through a mutual friend. Uh, her and her boyfriend uh, needed a roommate. I moved in instantly and uh, we had a connection instantly uh, as the very moment I met her. She was a very magical person. Uh, she was very intuitive and she had a lot of gifts. Uh, one of those gifts was singing. I believe she was singing an abandoned crest stone, uh, but when I knew her, um, uh, after a few drunken nights at the bar, she would always sing The Little Mermaid to me. <laughs> yeah, she sounds like she was a lot of fun. She was a lot of fun, yes. So what were the kinds of things that like, you and Crystal liked to do? Um, music was a huge connection. We did go to a lot of concerts. Uh, the area that we lived in uh, was over by the Ogden Theater and by the Fillmore, because it was just an active area for concerts. Uh, so we got to enjoy quite a few together. So music was really important to her. Music was very important. When I miss her, I will ask her to communicate through me to the music because that was such a connection for us. Well this, Crystal used to sit right here in her spiritual pose and... Right here? Right here. Just right in this area and just commune yeah. with her spiritual self and I used to look out the window and what's she doing out there it, it would inspire me because yeah. you know it's like i was saying she's stuck with her healthy food she ate yeah. um she she kept up her at least around us her her happy positive self so that that just makes all of this crap that people were talking about her harder to take and yeah, I understand she had problems and she was, I wouldn't labor as troubled, but just having problems with life in general, trying to get her life really moving. And I guess that's what would make me angry about people that would try to disparage her. Yeah. If you want to say something to somebody while they're still living, say it. Sure. But to come out after the fact, you know, it just, it shows what kind of person those, yeah. those people are. But, uh, but she would just, she would meditate here for hours. And I, Deb and I, my wife, would just say, wow, we, we do not have that focus that even though she was unfocused in a lot of areas, she really was trying to get her spiritual self where she wanted it. Yeah. Law enforcement processed the apartment, but came up empty handed. And so my understanding is Ara, who lived down here on the first floor, like by that patio, she was in Massachusetts, I think Boston that weekend. So she wasn't here whenever Crystal went missing. It's kind of weird that she was here and she didn't take phone cigarettes, and Ara says specifically, Crystal didn't go anywhere without her tobacco. What's kind of crazy is that right now on the corner, all these cars are going back and forth. It's pretty busy, I mean, it's daytime, but regardless, even in the middle of the night, this is a place that's like smack dab in the middle of town. And for no one to have seen anything at all, no car pulling up, not her leaving, which is strange. You know, if you were leaving to go to another place, you would think that even if you were gone for 15, 20, 30 minutes, you'd bring that stuff. Yeah. Which makes me think that someone put that stuff back in here just to make it that much more confusing. I think it's possible, especially if they couldn't find the key. Yeah. By a meeting with Rodney Irvin, who became Crystal's surrogate father. How'd you come to the decision to take Crystal in? Well, it was before her 16th birthday in 2001. Our son Mike had met her at a get-together and found out that she needed a place to stay. Crystal had a hard time in her life. Being from a broken family, she wasn't getting along with her aunt. And we just felt we have the room in the house. So my wife and I just decided that she could stay here. And that's what we were trying to do, is give her some sort of stability. How would you describe Crystal? She always 
always had a good heart regardless of her present situation. She was a very smart, talented young lady that was in a situation that just didn't lend to having a stable life. I'm heading to Crestone to meet with Crystal's landlord, Aura McDonald. She was the first one to report Crystal missing in July 2016, and I'm hoping she can help clear things up. When was the last time that you saw Crystal? The first week of July. I went to go collect rent. I knocked on her door. When she opened up the door, she had a tear-stained face. She was extremely distraught, and I said, what is going on? Are you okay? She said, I don't really want to talk about it, but I went to a party, and I'm pretty sure that I was drugged and raped. There's been a lot of things in town for a number of years now of women being drugged and raped here by groups of men and most of them end up being dumped in their driveway with no panties and they can't remember what the heck happened to them. So they can't remember faces, they can't remember what happened, but they know something happened. Who's doing this? A group of people. Do you know their names? No, I don't know names. They're pretty good at hiding who they are. It's creepy. It's really, really, really disturbing. Next, we're heading to a mine shaft located near the river. This particular mine shaft is one that Chris Halsey and his team were unable to get a camera down into. All right, Chance. Easy, buddy. Hunt. Chance, hunt. Good boy. Hunt. Okay, it's clear. Okay. It's clear. So as you saw that he went directly up there, went toward the opening, came out, smell around there, and then came back down. It's that quick. So if there was human remains sent in that area, he would have continued working it, and he did none of those. So it's been cleared. We can now mark it off the list and move to, on to other areas. Okay. Good boy. I know. Now we're heading up to the river, following the coordinates Catfish gave to Phoebe. Woo! That's pretty cold. All right, Chance, let's go, buddy. Easy. Come on, let's go. Good boy. So uh, I think this rock face right here is the tip that Catfish was talking about. There's a mine shaft over here. This is the general area. We've crossed the river, so let's just see what happens. Okay, great. Okay. All right, Chance, let's go. Chance, let's go. So we'll check over here. How's it looking back there? Let me check around the bend. Okay. Let's go. Come on. Easy, buddy. Easy. All right, let's go. Nothing over there. Okay. I see an opening right here. Easy, easy chance. I don't know. Which way we go? Hey, guys. Yeah. Over here. Right up here, guys. We're coming to you.